say shit, nigga. Been out here. This shit for 35 motherfucking years, nigga. Still nostalgic. Yeah. It's BMQ, I'm the truth and the promise. I still make him pay homage. Forefather and a pioneer. And I'm just getting started on my legacy and my existence. Mark my words, I'm marked the magnificent. You can't say shit to me. Make the Supreme Court change the rules on obscenity. I'm a legend in my lifetime. You know the problem with me, boy, I got 99. And nigga, I ain't never changing. My life's in the media, I'm just that famous. Cause I can make him do something. Make a hoochie mama wanna move him. Throw that dick, that's my part in the movie. Freedom of speech, that's my part in the movie. So you can say what you like My contribution to the coaches History Too loud, baby That's the legacy I beat the case on censorship They stick in my album for explicitness 30 years late, I still hold the record 375 cuss words on the record I want it all, I ain't doing enough If you ain't doing more than me, then you ain't doing too much No. So crown me the king of the genre It's BMQ, I'm just that phenomenal Cause I can make them do something Make a hoochie mama wanna move something Throw that dick, that's my part in the movie Oh my God! Oh, hey, it's nothing sacred. <laughs> oh, uh, this is the nothing sacred vid, uh, interview. I'm Cruise Control, and I'm Maxwell Silverhammer. And in the building, we got Brother Marquise, formerly of the Two Live Crew. What's up, man? What's going on? This is BMQ, Brother Marquise, formerly of the Two Live mm -hmm. Crew. Oh, and you, yeah, and you. Out triple OG of the rap game official. What's up, baby? What's up, man? And then man. you just heard your song BMQ's new song "Time to Learn." Uh, so you're still busting out new tracks, which is awesome. So thank you for joining us on our little hole in the wall here. Um, yeah, so let's get going, man. Max. So so yeah, that, bring that, it in, that's, man. That's your newest shit. Um, and obviously you kind of reinvented yourself as as BMQ, brother Marquise. You know, which you know. So talk about that a little bit. What what made you decide to do that? Well, I was sitting around thinking I wanted to shorten up my name a little bit and I wanted, you know, to do a little bit of rebranding. So I just looked in my name and I just grabbed some letters and put them together. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Very simple. <laughs> just yeah. Really easy. <laughs> well, you know what, man? I, I We got to go back because obviously you're, like you said, triple OG. You and Rodney O were in a group be in the beginning called the Caution Crew. And yes, sir. There was a guy in the group called C Funk. Was that the same guy that later, or was Captain Crunch at one time? Is it the same dude? I have no. I, I don't think so. I don't think so. I think C Funk. Uh, I don't know. I don't. I really don't know because, you know, after he was in there, uh, after he came to the group, you know, that was our last record, me and Rodney, and I went off to Miami doing other things. So. I kind of lost contact with him and Rodney. I spoke to him, but I don't think that he was Captain Crunch. Okay, hmm. not the same guy. So, so when did you actually get started? Like, obviously, it was it was because I remember what I remember was you know, hey, we want some pussy. Uh, that album that blew up that was before Me So Horny. If anybody doesn't know who who Two Live Crew is, it just you'll you'll know by the song Me So Horny, basically. Which is, <laughs> yeah, right. better. Which is their biggest biggest hit on the radio. Radio, but if you think that was the raciest song, they had some shit even before that that was like blown me at like eleven year old kids of this list. 
<laughs> you know, when you got 11 year old, put your headphones sick. on so your parents yeah. don't hear. Hell you know. no. Well, it depends on when the parents are home, but you had the old boom boxes, you know, when you've got 11 year olds singing, you can nibble on my dick like a rat does cheese. You know, that, that. <laughs> and actually, I believe was, was that uh, was that a brother Marquise line or a, a fresh kid? Yeah, that line? Wrote that record. I wrote that record on some pussy and I wrote me so horny. Oh, oh man, you wrote the whole thing. Yeah. Yes, I did. Oh, so, so let's go before that. So when did you guys actually get started and, and where, what happened with that? How did that go? How, how did you get uh, get going? The whole two that? live crew thing. Yeah. Uh, well, well, uh, as you all know, uh, Mr. Mix and Chinaman and Yuri Violet had already had two live crew and they were already a group mm -hmm. before Luther Campbell joined the group. Mm -hmm. I got in by Mr. Mix. Mr. Mix keeping his word. Uh, I was getting ready to go back to Rochester, New York. Mr. Mix said, "Say hey, if I need you for anything, man, if I got a spot for you or some room for you, I'm going to call you and I'm going to hook you up with the group. And yes, fortunately, fortunately, a uh, situation came up to where he needed me. And I was in Rochester, New York in the dead of winter. And I took that ticket and went to Miami. And unfortunately, we became two live crew. <laughs> oh shit so you weren't even there you pretty much replaced amazing v right you like yes, you probably didn't talk to him yes i did i never uh talked to yuri i think i might have seen yuri like one time oh wow wow yeah. and he was out the door and you were in as the new services <laughs> for two live crew yep <laughs> wow well then in i think let's see on the now, here's the crazy thing, because obviously there was some a little bit of tension, you know. I think with the group, right? Um, as far yeah. as yeah, a yeah, little bit. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, well, one thing I noticed on your your the first live album, and as a matter of fact, this is the first hip hop live album to come out. Two Live Crew did it, but right. you guys were on that. That was the one you guys did in Phoenix, and I was right. noticing that that. Luke didn't have much interaction with you on the stage. He was mainly talking to Fresh Kid Ice. And I was just like thinking, man, how come he's not talking to Brother Marquise? So I was just wondering what, what was going on there. Hey, man. Uh, shit, I've never really even <laughs> I've never really even talked to him. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so hmm. tape, me and him never had any kind of interactions, not a lot of interactions. Me and him never did. Interesting. Wow. So you're you're in a group with somebody <laughs> and he <laughs> at all. He doesn't know me at all. Hmm. Wow. <laughs> That's crazy. So, but uh, you know, obviously you were on some uh, some other tracks, and then and then you guys had the obviously the the nasty well, the nastiest uh, they want to be thing happened, what 89, 90, you know, when you guys right. they came down on you guys for the lyrics. Well, you want to talk about that a little bit? Uh yes. Uh yeah, well, we had the song Me So Horny. Uh, of course, I wrote it. And, um, you know, the song was beginning to cross over. It was the beginning yeah. to cross over, I think, in South Florida. So, you know, um, you know, when the, when, when the other kids got it and started listening to it and everything, it, be it became sort of a problem. It became sort of a problem. And then went the mm -hmm. arrest at, in Hollywood, Florida, and which was Broward County and Sheriff Nick Navarro at the time. He kind of had a bug up his ass for us. And, you know, and basically it, it, it turned out that it was more than uh, uh, it really harmed us as far as popularity and record sales and all that. So he, it, he really helped. Uh, he really helped just blow us through the roof. <laughs> so what? Uh, so what uh, basically before that, though, like how long were how long were you guys doing stuff before that? That nasty when you want to be because that was the album with was that the album with all those all those songs like. Uh, yeah, it was like it was a 90 minute album, I think. Yeah, it was like a long ass yeah. album because that was, was was there anything before that or was that like the, just the, the first album with everything on it? I'm, I'm trying to remember. Live as we want to be. I mean, I mean, it was uh, two live is what we are. Then move something. And then came um, then came nasty as we want to be. So that was our third album. Mm -hmm. Right. And that blew you guys up. I mean, obviously, you know, with yep. all the controversy behind it, you know, yep. people were going yep. up snatching the album after the fact. Although I, I got to say, you guys did a clean as they want to be, which is a radio version. But you guys still cussed on there occasionally. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Probably a cuss words probably seep through the seep through the cracks there a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> it was just two live crews. So it's like, well, fuck it. We're just going to leave it in. 
you yeah, know, and yeah. I, I just I just think it's funny that back then it was it was because it was all about you know like demeaning to women and stuff like that. Like yeah. it's got it's got to be funny now. Like like coming back because obviously the songs like Hey, we want some pussy. Which was that was that on that album or was that on a um, No, that was way older. That was yeah. That uh, was, two live is what we are. Yeah, that's that was what we are. That's that's because we heard that before. That's the funny thing about about people that actually listen back then, or actually even kids, and even suburban kids like myself, you know, and Max. Yep. We were we. Everyone's like, "Oh my God, Two Live Crew!" I'm like, "Yeah, we've heard them for like since like 1986, 87." <laughs> right. It wasn't like, new. <laughs> we were, it was like, "Oh my God, me so horny." It's like, dude, this is nothing compared to what the shit they were doing earlier. I mean. Uh, <laughs> But it's funny because when we heard that, you know, that was big. But now it's like, oh, my God, it's so demeaning to women. And now you got fucking Cardi B with a song about wet ass, wet ass pussy. pussy. And it's it's so empowering. It's like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, like, how could that? That This is so funny how shit changes over the fucking years, man. Uh, and, yeah, that's right. It's a culture shift going on out there right now. Oh, as far man. As I was thinking the same thing the other day. I'm like, man, we started this and. Uh, you know, with all of this profanity into the music and look where it's going at right now. I was listening <laughs> to Dope Cat. I'm like, wow, wow. She's <laughs> really saying that, like, and she's like beautiful. And then I'm like, shit, I started it. But then again, it's a lot of it's a lot of criminality that's out there in the music right now. So if it makes a woman look good, man, if you if if a chick can become a scripper. And then become a rapper and just fucking blow up and then talk about it. I think that's great. Yeah. yeah well, that's true. Because obviously she's lived that life. She knows what the, you know, this isn't like it's kind of like a studio gangster, studio stripper. Mm -hmm. And and there are a few of them. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Exactly. And every woman, believe it or not, every woman wants to get in touch with their sexy and their feminine side. And, and, and every woman wants to say that they're a bad bitch. You know what I mean? Of course. <laughs> yeah. Well, woman's going to say, I'm not, I'm, I'm a weak bitch. I'm a lame bitch or something like, you know, no, they're not going to do that. Wet ass pussy. Yeah. <laughs> but even before it was like, Hey, we want some wet ass pussy. You know, it's like, it's right. so, yeah. And so that came out back then. And then obviously you guys, you guys were circulating and uh, quote unquote underground, but it wasn't, I mean, it was, it's interesting how that works. Like, like I said, because all the parents are going, Oh my gosh. And, and we're like, when all the kids are like, yeah, this, this is, we've known these groups for years. Just the same thing with, uh, with uh, NWA and all that stuff. We knew them with, with like, when shit, when we had uh, tapes of Dope Man, you know, and stuff. Oh, boys in the ass, hood, yeah. And, you know, Girls on My Jock and shit like that, which is, which is before they even got really big. So it's just funny how that worked back then. Um, and it's just right when the parents realize, oh my God, you kids have been listening to this? Yeah, man, mom, yeah, mom and dad for like three fucking five to four years, you know? <laughs> so um but then of course that came out in 89 which is which is the big you know the me so horny which was on the radio actually everywhere and, and i think they even cut out the damn horny part it like that's like it'd be did they oh, me so or so i don't even know like i don't know how they got that on the radio back then but but different radio versions yeah probably yeah yeah hmm. so so that really so there was different versions that you guys did and that went to I different stations Oh, I believe so. I think it might have been a couple of different uh, clean clean edits running around out there. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So people did their own thing where they just cut words out and did their own yeah. little. I don't be dead. Oh, mm, man. <laughs> well, then, yeah, so you guys obviously had the whole the controversy where you, you went to jail. And actually, <laughs> and it's out there. It's up on YouTube. But MC Shy D was talking about it. And he said, yeah, he was like, the guys went to jail. Luke ducked out the back door. <laughs> I never went to jail. I never went to jail. So really, I've never, I've never went. I've never gotten arrested for that shit. I always went out the back door too. Oh, nice. <laughs> so, so how did Luke? Okay, so Luther was obviously the the guy that they always made to be the the big, the villain. You know, <laughs> not the, the the villain, but also like almost like the the spokesperson or head of the because that's all the people that most people that everyone knew about back you know in terms of just if you didn't know specifics of that shit. So that that must have been frustrating when he was he, he was kind of not doing as much as everyone else or and in certain ways or uh, like how and he's that... called the lead rapper of the crew or something and you're like what? he what? was yeah. rapping. Yes, Mr. Mix appointed him. Mr. Mix gave him all of that mm -hmm. power. Oh wow, Mr. Mix gave him all of that power. He wasn't a rapper to me. He wasn't doing what I could do. He was just yelling. Right. 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 Yeah. Yeah. He was just yelling. Hmm. 
but, right. but that's what's funny though because he's it, it's called you know it was in the in the beginning it was luke skywalker and the two live crew it's so always the two live crew remember remember it's always the two live crew it got to that point on band in the usa when luke started trying to separate himself as an artist oh okay so it became a uh, luke album as opposed to a two live crew album yep exactly now, one, one thing that I I think is overlooked about what you guys did back then, everyone talks about the censorship and the music, but you actually, with Me So Horny, because that came out in 89, right? Yeah. And, well, that was almost like the precursor to a lot of 90s songs, because I listened to you, because it had that that Miami sound, you know, kind of like that, like, boom. Sh- the booty boom, shake boom. Yeah, yeah, you know, like that kind of sound, almost like a whoop that. It almost seems like a whoop, there it is. Other songs got their shit off that kind of Miami sound that you guys are kind of popularized, right? Exactly, exactly. And all of the females are doing it right now. All of the females are taking our sound. Hmm. So 30 re- years and, later. Yep, and recreating it right now. The City Girls, the Lotto, all, all, of the, all of the bitches are doing it. All of the girls are doing it. And I ain't mean to call them no bitches, but all of the girls... <laughs> They, yeah, they call themselves that, so it's yeah, okay. exactly. They obviously put that label on themselves, so you know, <laughs> <laughs> it is what it is. So, actually, should we jump into some music real quick? Yeah, let's go into our first, uh, for our next song. Which one are we going into? I think what was it? Two na- this now. This is the project you did after Two Live Crew, and it's uh called Too Nasty, and it's uh, it's basically it's called Indecent Exposure, right? Indecent Exposure. I can't say I love you. Oh, cool. Let's get into that. And then we'll talk about the song after that. This is the Nothing Sacred interview with uh, Brother Marquis. <laughs> Brother Mark. <laughs> I'm having a brain fart there. Brother Marquis, the Two Light Crew. Let's go into this song. We'll be back in the Nothing Sacred interview. Yeah. The word lover, hasta la vista, baby, it's over. I can't say it, and I don't wanna hear it. If this love you're looking for, then girl, you can forget. I got no time for love, silly games. Cause every day with you is the same old thing. You call me all the time, trying to better our relations. Do you love me? Do you love me? Your whole conversation. I really didn't mean to lead you on. My feelings for you are not that strong. I thought it over and came to the conclusion with an attitude like that girl, you're too confusing. Slow down, baby, cause you get in next to me. You ain't all that, but you give good sex to me. Your friends talk about what we go through, but they can't make me tell you I love you. And all that, but when you call my eye, I make the best of it. And told myself, hey, she wanna get hit. Not physically and not even mentally. But you want it all your time to be speak with me. You got to watch yourself. I don't have the time, dang. For the hugs, the kisses, and the mind games. We never even agreed on being serious. But when a girl calls a crib, you get furious. Say, hey, I'm a rapper, the love is for the singers. Ain't no by the way, are there any rings on my fingers? Yeah, right. I thought so, but if your feelings get hurt, it ain't my fault, yo. But when I'm in a mood, I might hug ya. But don't take it the wrong way, cause I don't love ya. About all the love we was having Saying I paid your rent and you like bills Sweated for the gills and you didn't pop the pills Girl, you going out like a ghetto thing Baby got back, but where's the brains? You can't make something out of nothing Especially when we ain't doing nothing but buzzing So back up off me, my heart might cost me The day you said you loved me was the day you yeah, lost me But the way when I've been through There were no strings attached But one day I might just meet my match a woman that'll turn me out Change my ways and put a brother in a daze But I don't think that'll happen too soon Cause I'm a real high brother And I need a little room Love is a game and I don't play that Baby, don't say that So the next time you're holding me I might shove you 
ya The reason I don't love ya are back holy shit okay so that was too nasty who was the other guy rapping with you on that track uh that's dj toomp he went on to he went on to win a grammy he went on to win a grammy with uh kanye west when i get my money right he also really? dis- yeah he also discovered ti oh yeah. shit. okay yeah. so he's yeah. kind of he's kind of big this isn't just some you know dude got- that you yeah, 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 yeah. We kind of started off together, and he, you know, and he he got with Ti and, and so mm-hmm. on, and went to do some great things. And went on to do some great things. I'm proud of him. He's a really nice dude. So, what happened with the transition there? Obviously, things fell apart with with you and Two Love Crew. How did that? How did that? Uh, have you go into Too Nasty and get get involved with that group? Well, I just was. I just wanted to do something. I just yeah. wanted to. Um, and you know the opportunity presented itself and i just went for it hmm. so it was like okay this this dude wanted or did you come at him or did he come to you um i think it might have been like a mutual thing you know hey that's uh he's he was a producer and i was a rapper and and yeah and, and you know we just had a good vibe we just oh. had a good vibe. And at that time, you know, we we had time to do it, and we just put out that project. And that, that you just dropped it. Well, you know, no. I, I do want to back back up a little bit. Okay, so okay. in '93, there was an album that came out. It said Two Live Crew," but it was two other guys on it: a guy named Fat Daddy and another dude. And was that the point where Luke was trying to revamp the Two Live Crew? And hey, know, man, probably I probably was gone after that when they started putting other guys in the Two Live Crew. I was gone. Okay, okay. So, yeah, I was out of there. Yeah. So you know nothing about that, obviously, because I remember buying that album, and I'm like, I'm double, triple checking, going, what this is yeah. This two one? live crew, two live crew has had more members than the damn Temptations. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah, so, man, that's that's crazy. So obviously, you moved on. You did the the two nasty project. And uh, so what What we've been doing since like the late 90s till now? Oh, the late 90s till now, man, I've just been living. I've been trying to stay out of the way. I've been watching the record industry revolve and I've been working and I've been doing other things. And I just, you know, man, just wanted to have regular, regular kind of life. You know, I mean, I... You know, I don't really know how to be a celebrity and I didn't really like the record business and all of that kind of bullshit that's going that 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 goes on with that. Mm-hmm. So we you know, got out of the way. I just got out of the way. But remember now, me and uh me and China Man, me and China Man were working together. So the oh. majority of that time we were doing shows, just me and him. Oh man. So it was yeah. and you guys were doing it as the two live crew? Yeah, yeah, me and China Man was working together for a long time. Oh, wow. That was like throughout the 90s? Yep, yep, we would go overseas. Yep, yep, throughout the 90s and the 2000s, early part of the 2000s. Interesting. So yeah. so did, did anything happen with you guys, or did you just kind of part ways and, and go your own separate way, or was there some kind of beef or what happened? Yeah. All kind of internal shit going on with the group. If there's more than two guys, it's if it's more than two people in something, mm-hmm. some rap shit. It's always some bullshit in there, you know. It's just if you wanna, you get tired of it, want to walk away from it, or you want to keep on, you know, keep on dealing with the bullshit. Right. So sometimes I would get kind of tired of the shit, and I'd take a break. I'd come back to it. I'd take a break, and I'd come back to it. You know, you need a break. Sometimes yeah. you need a break from that shit. You know. Is that yeah. why you kind of decided that you just want to step away just because of all the egos yeah. and bullshit going on? Got to take a break from it sometimes. Yeah. yeah. You take- Man. And just- well, yeah. 
Because you got to think, too, that me and Chinaman and Mr. Mix, we had the Shake a Little Something album. And then we did uh, Hoochie Mama for Friday. Oh. So, yeah, that was like in the early 2000s, too. So it's been some work. I've been working. I've just not been sitting on my ass. Actually, explain that a little bit, because uh, obviously, you know, by then, that album came, um, or Friday, the Friday soundtrack, came out, I believe it was 95, 96, around that time. And uh by then obviously a verb had replaced you uh, you know in the back in the ass for the nine foes or whatever but then now here it was you and fresh kid ice rapping on this hoochie mama track was that an old track or was this a new one you did verb had replaced me before that before hoochie mama right 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 yeah and, and yeah. so then but you come back on hoochie mama which was in 95 so right. was that did you like was that an old track or was that yeah. something new Break then I took a break then, and remember now we didn't all come. We just came back to do that record. Luke was not going out doing shows with us on that record. He just did the record. Ah, okay. So it was right. rec recorded. Then, then and Mr. Mix. Then it was me and Mr. Mix and China Man and Mr. Mix. Uh, I guess he took him a break, and me and China Man kept it going. Wow. <laughs> just, just. Uh, it's it's a, a nonstop, obviously, situation where one so, thing's you want to. Yeah, it, man, it's it's yeah, it's crazy. Look, it's fun. Right. Let me ask you this, man, because obviously you built the groundwork and and the whole fighting the censorship and all that type of stuff. What do you feel about today when people are trying to you know flag YouTube channels and censor this and censor that things that they don't agree with, and it's like they're totally undoing your guys' work. Right. Well, you can't really undo it because, you know, we're, 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 uh, we are protected by the First Amendment. So mm -hmm. you can always fall back on that. And people are always going to have something to say. This is America. You know? yeah. got right to, free, right to free speech and protest. You can do whatever you want. You can say whatever you want. But it is what it is in the law. Yeah. Well, that, that, and that's true. I guess it, very. it's just funny, though, that because now everything i mean even i post this stuff on facebook and you know they flag it and they say you know you gotta fact check this you gotta do and i'm like man what the fuck this is all everything that two live crew ice t all these dudes fought against yeah yeah that's just that's just because in their community they have children they have children and then they got you know they and in, in Facebook, you know, it's it's everybody out there. You got the women activists, you got the LGBTQ people and yeah. black lives matter they got every they got everybody with every sensitive issue on that platform you yeah. know what i'm saying and they're all in their own different groups and fighting against yeah. each other so it's just it's exactly. like a damn exactly you know so, <laughs> facebook don't want to offend anybody because they don't want to lose any advertisement yeah so, yeah so they're with you over here one day and they're with somebody else over there one day and our community does not accept this kind of material and blah, 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 blah. That's every fucking community. Man, I, I, I remember because uh, we had a guy on here uh, named Crazy White Boy. I don't know if you're familiar with him. He's from, uh, uh, I think, Georgia, somewhere in Georgia. Yeah, I think. But a lot of crazy white boys. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Okay, well, he's a rapper named Crazy White Boy. But anyway, his... <laughs> his we use his album cover which is just a i think it's a foot that's like stepping on something or whatever we posted this shit and facebook flagged it and they said this is goes against our sexual blah blah blah, blah. and i'm like thinking man this is some bullshit you know you guys are you're still on this you know after all these years yeah yeah they got rules and regulations too buddy can't yeah. you can't go far but then they got girls on there that's posting and busting it open oh, dude it. yep so yeah, and they or they got violence on there where people's like watch this, watch these people beat the shit out of each other because you know you see yeah. that like scrolling through like Twitter or other things like literally people just beating the flag. shit out of each they other. Who they want to flag? I think they flag who they want to flag for real. Yeah. yeah. Oh sure. They're 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 looking for stuff that doesn't meet their agenda, their code, their whatever they got going on. Or sure. they're they're flagging all like smaller channels like ours because we don't give them the revenue so they can say, look at see, we're we're censoring all the bad stuff, you know, because right. they're not they're not losing anything from it. Like they're not gonna censor a, a million, you know, a bum fights, you know, shit or something like that or whatever else that's getting a lot of uh, views for their ads, but they'll just take down the little guys so they can say they're actually doing something about all this 
terrible stuff on YouTube that's being seen, you know, or OnlyFans or whatever the hell it is, uh, right. Twitter. Um, I'm interested though, back going back a little bit to when you when you when you guys when you guys blew up in the early '90s and stuff like how crazy how crazy was it in terms of concerts and just fans and stuff like that? Like, what, do you have any crazy stories about shit that happened back then where you're like, holy shit. Like, cause obviously you said that, that fan being a fan, you know, not being a fan, being famous or being, um, you know, being, being in, in that, the limelight, being in that work. limelight got very stressful. Like, was it just too crazy for that reason? Or was, was it just because like, was it just like just psycho fans and stuff like that or anything crazy that you used to do or. No, the fans were pretty cool. I mean, you yeah. know, I'm kind of, person when I want to be so you know I can go out and relate to a fan to the fans really quickly and and kind of authentically mm -hmm. you know you know back then a lot of stuff was new so yeah it's we seen we've seen a lot of crazy I've seen a lot of crazy things mm -hmm. and I've, I've seen yeah a lot of things I've seen some fans do some crazy shit and I've seen fans do crazy shit uh, 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 inside the live performances as well. Um, oh, yeah. And, I'm sure. Yeah. You know. I'm sure you've seen a shit ton of, of titty shots. Just women, you know, and <laughs> just tons of that. Titty that. Man. You know, I'm the titty man. I used I used to put a titty in my mouth on the stage, but can't do that no more. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, see, okay, there, there's an example of what we're talking about. Like. Right. Here it was, you guys, you know, work to get to a certain point as far as the censorship thing. And like you said, you can't do that anymore. You know, like, wait a minute. At one yeah. time you could, now you couldn't? Hey, uh, well, you know, I was always trying. I was always trying shit out. So mm -hmm. basically, you know, got cell phones out here now. You know, I've, uh, I think what, about 10 years ago, before, before the cell phones became really, really popular, I had a case out in the Dakota, Dakota, Minnesota. I was out in, yeah, Minnesota. A chick grabbed me. I grabbed her. She grabbed my private parts. I probably touched hers, and I ended up in court. No, of course. Oh, hell no. Yeah. D is yeah. it because of who you were? And that was before cell phones, yeah. Oh, wow. It's because of who he was and because he had he was a dude. Because you can yeah. chicks can grab your crotch. You're supposed to be happy about it. Yeah, but yeah. you grab their pussy. Oh, you're going to jail. You, no, you brush their arm and you're going to jail. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. That's true. Yeah, it reminds me of a story. Like I was in a this happens a lot, dude. I was in a bar, I was drunk. Uh girls coming up and just grab like running her hand up my leg, and she was just fucking just kind of roguish. And it was like, all right, you know, but no one said shit to her, but all over the bar, that happens all the time, you know. So I'm sure that was part of it too. Like, or maybe she was just kind of baiting you, you think? Yep, probably kind of baiting me, yep. And, and thought she was gonna get get me for something, some type of settlement. The only thing I had to uh the only thing that was fucked up about that is I had to come out of my ass and pay for all the attorney fees. No, oh, Jesus. Oh man. That's so just all the members of two live crew end up in court somewhere at some point. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I ain't going to jail. I'm not going to jail for him. But Damn right, I man. On him either, but uh, yeah, that got me. That got well, me. Well, I would have had to. I would have had to register myself as a sex offender. Fuck that shit. Oh Ridiculous. God, really? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Uh, and then they initiate shit first, and then you're the one who's the who's the sex offender when they when it's initiated by the other person, which is always yep. fucked up. Exactly, man. God has had his hands on me, man, throughout this whole ordeal. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That's man. good to hear. Now, yeah, thinking about... Oh, oh, sorry, man. Oh, no, go ahead, man. I was going to say, so uh, now this Caution Crew, is that's another group you were involved in. Was that before Two Live Crew? Yes, yes. Me and the Caution Crew, I started in the ninth grade, me and Rodney O. Oh, shit. So that's how you guys go back that far. You guys don't really cut, stay in contact with each other any longer? Uh, he's more friends with Mr. Mix than me. Okay. 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 Yeah, he's more friends with Mr. Mix than me. You know, it seems like to me, and I tell everybody, I don't have a lot of rap friends for some reason. I don't have a lot of friends in the industry. Hmm. That's interesting. I don't that I can like pick up and call and be cool with and shit. I don't. Hmm. I mean, that's actually kind of cool in in a way because I mean, yes, you're sir. you're obviously your own person. <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So why don't we go into that and then we'll come back here. Oh, we're gonna jump in, dude. We're gonna oh, you wanna hear caution crew? Or is First? it are we gonna do oh we're gonna jump into uh the the, Dick Almighty? Dick Almighty. No, this uh this is off uh 
nasty as they want to be. Nasty as they want to be. It's and this is an, uh, this is the song. Like this is the funny thing about that album. Like it's oh my god, me so horny. Yet you have a song called Dick Almighty. <laughs> my seven bizzos there's all kinds of shit on that album. I, I god i remember that shit we used to listen to, yeah shit. oh god every day every day that's crazy man so why don't we go into that and we'll be back with with brother marquise uh and uh we'll come back after that on the nothing sacred interview this is the caution crew i mean i'm sorry god, jesus christ i'm losing two live mind. crew <laughs> two live crew this is my brain man all right. old man i'm in my that's what's <laughs> in my late 40s you know what happens <laughs> anyways the two live crew and dick on mine will be back in just a few yo what the fuck is your name motherfucker long rock yeah. fat stiff peter stiff stiff peter i'm gonna let you guys in a private personal part of my life and ladies listen up i may just save your relationship ain't took a dick from california can't have that motherfucker to watch in dc and it fucked the nation
wow. That dick will make a bitch act cute. Suck my dick, bitch, and make it puke. <laughs> Dude, how do you fucking... I, <laughs> you know? Dusty, yeah. <laughs> do you remember saying those things? I don't remember it like that. No, I was a good American Christian boy. I don't know. Okay. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't remember saying anything like that. Was that <laughs> you plead the fifth on those lyrics, eh? <laughs> He's uh, like, right. I wrote all those lyrics, but I didn't. But I, the, uh, oh, I uh, rap, well, fuck. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I just was a a a a a, 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 a red blooded African American male getting in touch with hormones during that period. of <laughs> That sounds right, good to man. me. I like it. <laughs> but a lot, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of dick sucking. You know, dick, you know, it's like nibble on my dick like a rat does cheese. Yeah, a lot, a lot of that going. On. Yeah, lot, damn right. A lot of that going on. <laughs> Botchery, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's you know the other day when I called Mister Mix originally about the interview, I, I spit one of his rhymes to him when he called me back. I, I was spitting the lyrics from S and M. And he was like, I didn't say that, did I? And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> that's your verse, bro. <laughs> He's like, I, that yeah, wasn't me. Rip. I don't remember. <laughs> yeah. Mr. Mix was Mr. Mix, yeah, came up with a lot of that corny, silly shit. That was him, for real. That definitely was him. <laughs> <laughs> Put it on Mr. Mix. So, wow. <laughs> so, so anyways, obviously, you've gone through, you've been, you've been still like back and forth in the industry over the last 20 years. 30 years. Yeah. What, what do you say the biggest, I mean, obviously the music industry is complete shit, or at least it, it is now in different ways than it was, and, or do you have a different take on it? How do you feel about how the music industry has, has evolved and changed? Is it, is it gotten worse or better for you over the, over the years? Just in your opinion, that's just like since you haven't been totally like, you know, like, uh, like some of these artists, like him, if you, if you see Madonna lately, shit, man. Oh God. Uh, I guess my point is you've kind of had a, like a, a, a distance a little bit from it. So what do you, what are your opinions on that? Well, I always like Madge, Madonna. I've always liked her. I've never met her in person. Mm -hmm. uh, I've always liked her artistic views on shit, sexuality and, you know, and the culture and the way that she dressed and everything. I guess uh, I'm just talking about like, just like the people that are desperate to stay in the limelight while you're kind of sitting, sitting a little back, a little bit going, you know, yeah. 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 Uh, you know, well, I guess if you had it on 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 that level that yeah, she, I guess that's true. <laughs> being one of the biggest pop stars in the world, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah, hmm. I'm probably gonna miss all of that shit. You know, I miss the stage now. Mm -hmm. To tell you right. the truth, it now, but you know, hey, it is what it is. Yeah, well, and you're still recording music, so obviously, you know, you're trying to get back out there in certain ways. Yeah. It's different. It's different in in the rap genre. You, yeah. If you if you notice, rappers do not reach back for the old rappers. They don't reach back for us. They don't. You know what I'm saying? It's when we're done, we're done. It's interesting. You know, That's back like very true. Yeah, you know what I mean. We can't come back like Abba and fucking. You know, we can't come back like those kind of groups. Hmm. Not exactly because it's, yeah. it's changed so much. Yeah, but changed what do you, so much. How how do you feel about that? Like in, in terms of just like. Uh, like just the music business, like, do you think it like back then, obviously they had record deal, at least a scam artists and stuff like that all the time. And now it doesn't seem like artists make anything from their music. So it seems like, is it more just about just making music for the, for this, the joy of doing it or, or, or just or what are you, what, where, where are you at right now with that? For me, it is for yeah. me, it is for like the joy of doing it. Uh, and you know, I guess artists probably now are getting more of an advance they're probably giving them big advances right now. You know, like I've heard some guys, I've heard some guys of getting a single, of getting a million dollars for a single. So, you know, I mean, yeah, so it is what it is. It seems like they're getting more, they're getting more money nowadays and they're blowing up faster. And then, you know, uh, their career is over with faster. You know what I mean? It's like now, it's like it's a microwave game. Yeah. <laughs> you hear oh. Here and you're gone, you know. A rap single used to last for damn near three months. Uh, you'll probably get lucky enough to get a, a month and a half out of it. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah, this 
it's going so fast. It's changing up, and it's 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 way. It could be way more sexual, then it could be way more criminal, and the criminal side gets real to where people want to actually talk about the shit and go do it, and it's just a bunch of bullshit in the rap game. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine because uh, you know back in in your guys' days, obviously it was like just let's get on a record and get dirty and talk some shit. Where now. You know they're involving other people. It's about the antics. It's not about you know are are you making a good record? Is this a, a strong, you know, right. spitting some real shit? You know, right. now it's about okay. I'm gonna kill somebody. How many how many people can I kill in a verse? And right? I'm gonna go out and try to at least kill one person. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? To get that street cred shit and all of that shit. It's just mm -hmm. way too crazy right now. Yeah, and it's also also the fact that you could actually make a, a make a TikTok video or an Instagram or whatever. And all of a sudden that becomes a hit. Like the yeah. song in your damn Instagram becomes a hit. And that's yep. like the new thing. And it's like not even actually people going into a studio. Cause obviously back in, you know, in the nineties to early two thousands, even you had to go to a studio to create stuff. Like now you don't even have to do that. You can actually just you know, sit in your bedroom, record sit in your some bedroom shit. and record some shit. Like, and speaking of that with your newer stuff, like, like time to learn and then other stuff that's coming out and we'll get to more stuff that you're into soon coming up. But like, what do you, where do you, do you just, just do it and do you create, do you have a producer or do you kind of do it, do it yourself and kind of create the, the music or how does, how's that working for you now when you, with your newer stuff? Well, I just go to the studio and grab everything off of email and grab oh. everything email you know everything is ran by apple so you know hey ran off your apple email into mm -hmm. the to the apple shit and there we go to the pro tools and bam there we go so people are emailing you do you have specific producers that are email emailing you beats like the last you know for the uh yeah. time to learn track DJ spin yes dj spin uh yeah dj spin did that when he did uh scarred he did a couple of songs for trick daddy couple of songs for luke He's a he's a uh, he's a platinum uh, he's a platinum producer out of Miami. Mm -hmm. Makes uh, sense. It's good, man. It's got a nice clean sound yeah. to it. So yes, it does. He got some nice clean sound to it. A guy named John mixed it. He's a hell of a he's a hell of an engineer. And yep. And uh, wow. So I, I'm 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 kind of excited about the stuff that I'm working on now. I'm trying to get some things together now to. Uh, to put something out in a screaming service, uh, put a song out for the summer. Mm. And uh, yeah, man, hopefully we can get something going. Hopefully we can get something going good with a good sound. Not saying it's going to come out and blow up and shit, but you know, I'm just doing it for, I guess I'm just doing it for the culture and just to stay creative. Right. Stay, stay relevant. Kind of sort of. Yeah. I, I think that's just kind of the way you got to go at it now, because the day of yeah. the, of the, the artist who gets big and gets all over quote unquote, the radio, mm -hmm. um, is 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 it's it's kind garbage. of it's over it's over it's like like i've done some stuff i do some music with some people i write some stuff and at this point it's got to be about just enjoying what you're doing and just kind of like doing it for the actual process and just enjoying right. recording yeah uh, instead yeah. of trying to make it big you know and, and someone discovering you and that kind of thing yeah yeah um yeah i mean yeah <laughs> well you know and i want to ask you about the that 99 problem song you did with, with ice T. Yeah. So that was originally your song. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so how, how did he get to put it on his album? Hey man, uh, long fucking story. I'm so sick of talking about this damn record, man. Yeah. I got you, man. Uh, I got you. Yeah. And that could have been one of my friends, but you know, he stole the record from me. He stole the record from me and Jay-Z got it. And Jay Z got it. And, uh, Jay Z, he got some money from the record. So instead of paying me, he got mad at me, and like it's a big falling out thing. So you know, you know how people and money are, man. Uh, that's that's too bad, man. Because I know you were on his uh, his next album, uh, the the you know the Seven Deadly Sin, Seventh Deadly Sin, and you had a, a speaking part on there where you're like, man, all the all the love it just it gets to a nigga. You know what I'm saying? And you were kind of yeah. talking on it. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, so so i guess it happened later like early 2000s huh when the shit sandwich exploded yeah yeah well yeah man well but obviously you've continued on yes you're still still doing what you do so that's yeah. that's good it's good and you didn't fall to the to the cracks and or like a lot of, a lot of other artists and then not and especially in the in the rap field 
really nice. It seems like you kept yourself kept head on a little bit and just kind of kept yourself going. Um, yeah, man, I was just trying to just basically survive out here, man. Just, you know, this record industry shit will chew you up. You have to take a break from it. You know what I mean? Right, mm -hmm. right. Break. Make it constant. I have to step back from this shit sometimes. Huh. Yeah. Well, you did, uh, I know in 2016, I think it was you and Mr. Mix, you guys had a song. How about them? What was it? It was, it was a football team, I think. Oh, that's Mr. Mix shit. You know, he's into the sports. Oh, uh, okay. I think you were on that though, weren't you? Or part of it? Yeah. He, Mr. Mix is into the sports shits, man. Into that shit, man. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. I, I thought you were on that record too, a little bit. Just kind of, you know, talking a little shit. Uh, that's a mix. <laughs> that was a Mr. Mix project. Okay. So what? Uh, what are you actually up to now? You got. You obviously had that new song come out. Uh, what yep. else you got going on? And can't you go ahead and website, tell us YouTube, website, anything? Website, other things that you've been doing. Yes, uh, I've been hosting some comedy. I've been hosting some comedy. I, I got a uh, got a uh, a open mic and comedy night that I'm going to be uh, hosting uh, every Thursday. Probably starting in a couple of weeks. I'm looking forward to that. I got a couple of concerts coming up. I'm getting back on the road, uh, oh. going up, self doing uh, the two live crew songs, and I'm looking forward to that. And I got a, a whole team of people, and uh, yeah, so we're just gonna go out and just try to you know keep the legacy alive, and uh, uh, you know, and add and add to the branding of Brother Marquise. Nice, nice. So you're just keeping it going. By the way, <laughs> homie, we aren't gonna let you get away without this. It's your birthday today, dude. Happy birthday. Oh, yep. shit, man. Happy <laughs> birthday, dude. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. One more year. He's still still here. That's one thing I've been I've been thinking about a lot lately is as you get older, you just kind of appreciate the fact that you're still still kicking. You know, at some point, you know, you, you worry about, oh, what have I done? Or, you know, where, where am I? Where, you know, why aren't I doing things the way a certain way? But then you're like, man, I'm, I'm still freaking alive. You know what I'm saying? I'm still I still got I still can do what I'm doing, which is a blessing, you know? Right. Yep. Yeah, man. Well, that's that's crazy. Um. Oh, one more track I want to mention was the track that you did with Poison Clan called "Poisonous Freestyle." With it was you, Tony Rock, and obviously Debonair and and um, JT right. Money. So that was dope, man. I I like the fact that they they saw your lyricism, your ability to be lyrical, and they slapped you on that track. Right? Is that I'm assuming that's how it went, right? Uh. Yeah, and kind of no, you know, at that time we were, you know, that time they they were new to the label as na label mates, and I guess they just wanted to do something with me, and and I did, and I did. It wasn't, you know, like we were all, it wasn't no thing like we were all cool and like friends. Mm. I guess they were all around the studio at the same time or whatever, and he just jumped on like that. Okay, so it was not like, hey, man, I want to make sure I get the most lyrical cats on Luke Records, so... <laughs> I want to <laughs> let's grab Tony Rock and, and Brother Marquise. Right. Yeah. Uh, and that was cool. I always thought that uh, I always thought that Poison Clan was kind of nice theirself. Oh, yeah. Oh, they were dope. <laughs> Poison yep. Clan's good. No, no question, yep. man. So, yep. but uh, well, hey, uh, shit, any websites, any information you want to give out, man? This would definitely be the time to do it. Well, yeah. I'm. Uh, of course, I'm uh, on social media. I am uh, the official brother Marquise underscores on Facebook and Instagram. And if you guys are into working out out there, you can follow Pilates by Raven on Instagram. And you can also follow Pilates by Raven on YouTube. She has her own channel. And uh, yeah, get your workout on if you're into Pilates and nutrition, health and those great things. Oh, awesome. That's and a, uh, yeah, you can get yeah you can get me on either or Instagram or Facebook official brother Marquise underscores. Cool, nice, yeah, nice. cool. And, and, and I'm guessing Raven is is that your wife? That's my daughter. Oh, it's your daughter. Okay, okay. So nice, awesome, cool. man. Well, oh, congratulations boy. on that. She's obviously uh, doing something well for herself, and that's a good thing too. Oh, yeah. oh yes, so, yes. So we'll post all we'll post some links and uh, on the description on this, and we'll go from there. Absolutely. But thank, thank you for joining us, man. We really appreciate it. Uh, hey, keep up, anytime keep you guys need me back, I've been getting some pretty cool interviews here lately, so I'm enjoying it. Awesome, oh, good, man. Good. 
Okay. Well, yeah. we'll, we'll definitely have you back at some point. Um, maybe <laughs> you plan on doing a full album at some point, or is it just going to be singles? Uh, Heck no, I'm just probably get it. They'll, they'll be lucky to get an EP out of my ass. They got some, <laughs> but probably a couple songs. You know, when you get to this point, you don't need a full album. You know, nah, you can just, well, true. just be, you know, yep. we can do an EP like four or five songs. And that's call, yeah, go ahead. And, and yeah, get four or five songs and four or five singles and put them all together. Uh, throw, them up, throw them up on a screaming service somewhere and see what they do. Right, like SoundCloud or uh, shit. Yeah, I don't man. even know if anybody's using SoundCloud anymore. I think that might be a little out out of date, but hey, I know, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's mainly just Spotify and other other streaming services. But usually, what they do now is they'll put out a bunch of singles and then put them into an album that later on at some point. But yeah, it's all about the yeah. single now. Yeah, so. it's all about the single. Yep. Nice, yep. nice, well, cool. Well, brother Marquise, man, thanks for coming in, hanging out with us for a little bit. And the rest of you fuckers, I'm Maxwell Silverhammer. Well, actually, let's do this first. We're going to wrap up with our Apple before we'll give our last. Oh, that's right. right that's right. We got a track from the Caution Crew. This is taking them back, man. We this are is we taking them back dug for this yeah. shit. West Side Stories <laughs> with you and Rodney O. And uh, it's very Grandmaster Flash feely, which I like, man. It, 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 felt, it was I was like, these dudes are bringing it. Cool, man. Well, we'll we'll see you all soon. Thanks once again, uh, Brother Marquise, for joining us. This has been right. a Nothing Sacred interview. I am Cruise Control. I'm Maxwell Silverhammer. And that's the the story story there. Bitches! See you later.
not far from the state of insanity. Your license took all the cause of a rag on the wrong side of town, trying to go for a bag. Police is kicking back while we shoot each other down. When we crying for help, they ain't never around. We cry real loud, but no one listens. Cause nobody cares to give you attention. Nobody loves you, nobody cares. I was once running fearless, now I'm running all scared. Yeah. 